Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the River Thames. I'm back at Walton on Thames. I'm not fishing for broom today. The feeder rod's been left at home and I'm going old school today and I'm going to be fishing hemp and tares for roach. Now it's not something I've done a lot of, but yesterday I came up early in the morning, made loads of schoolboy errors. By three hours into the session when I was packing up, I just about sort of thought I sussed out basically how to hit the numerous bites I was getting. Um, I'll run through those little errors that I made uh, yesterday. But as I said, I'm out in the water. You can't beat this sort of fishing, float fishing, little pole float, bulk shot, couple of droppers, feeding every put in. I've, I've been fishing about, I don't know, half an hour. It's half past two in the afternoon when I got here. So it's about three o'clock. Fed for half an hour and I'm thinking, oh, am I going to catch anything here? Because it's only about five and a half foot deep where I'm fishing. Yesterday I was under the bridge and it was probably about 12 foot deep and I was getting loads and loads of bite. Kept feeding, took me about half an hour, 20 minutes to start getting the odd sign. And then my first positive bite after half an hour, I got a roach about eight ounces. So I'm confident as the day progresses and the evening uh, draws in, those roach are going to get a little bit more confident and come in. So uh, yeah, I'm going to carry on feeding, see if I can get a couple more fish in the net. Um, and uh, we'll see how the session goes. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I came up yesterday morning. Uh, I got here about seven o'clock and I was told that there were some good bags of roach coming out with fish to a pound. And uh, the angler that was catching her was up in the water, in the deep water, you see. So we were going through that period of really, really hot early September weather. And as you can see, it's changed now. It's about the second day since that weather changed. So straight away, I thought, if I'm catching up in the water, I'm just going to be fishing shirt button style on the drop um, and just feeding all the time. And straight away, I came up, the float I was using, I rigged up was too small. I was, I think it was a point, 0 0.6 pole float, little rugby style float, shirt buttoned it. And I was feeding and um, just getting bites and I just could not hit them. Uh, as the session progressed, I went down onto a bulk shot, went down on the deck, plumbed up. Um, as I said, it was 10, 12 foot and um, went onto a bigger float, a one gram float, and I started hooking the actual roach. So it was a learning curve for me. As I said, I don't do it that often. And the lovely thing about fishing is there's always something new to go out there and do. And once I had those roach going and started to catch a few, I must admit it was about nine o'clock by the time I started hooking them and the bites had gone right off. So I knew I could have had a really, really good day. So I've come back today, couldn't get up this, this morning. If I wanted to catch lots of fish, I would have been here at first light. But got here at two, been feeding. I'm fishing shallower water because I think if I get those fast lightning bites on running line, and to be perfectly honest, when you're fishing hemp and tears, the whip or the pole probably would be a lot better. I thought in the shallower water, I might make a lot more contact with those bites and enjoy it a lot more. Lovely standing out in the water. I've started getting a few bites and a few signs. They're not the bites I was getting yesterday. They're just little signs, but there are lots of boats and canoes going down, swans chasing each other, etc., etc. What you would expect in the afternoon, uh, late summer on the Thames. So um, yeah, things look good. I'm going to go through the tackle in a minute just with you, just because I want to get that out of the way before those fish start biting. Let's just run through the tackle I'm using. I'm not going to mention any manufacturer's names unless, of course, they're the ones that look after me or if there's a significant reason to actually mention that name of that product. But I've got a 15-foot rod, a little match reel that's loaded with the Browning Uni Rig line. This is 0.16mm, 4-pound 
brake and strain. I'm using a rugby ball type float, which I'll show you a close up and I've actually blackened the tip out. As you can see behind me, there's a, a lot of white sky on the surface and it just makes it so much easier to see the float. Connected to the line through the top eye and then I've got three small rubbers to make sure that once I've got that depth or that, that depth where those fish are feeding, it doesn't move when I'm striking fast and hard. Um, I'm fishing an Olivet. The float today is a 0.8 gram because it's shallower water than yesterday. I've got a 0.7 gram Olivet and I've got a couple of tiny little Stotts droppers. I've got a size 9 and a size 10 down to something I found out very important and a mistake I made yesterday was um, I used one of my trusted super specialist hooks and I just couldn't hit those bites. But when I went on to a wide gape hook, that I started hooking a lot more fish and I'm using the Browning Spear B size 16. Size 16 seems to be the ideal size. So they're very sharp. You've got to strike fast and hard. I'm using a barbless. Um, you can use a barbed if you want. I just find barbless goes in a lot easier. So tackle wise, fairly basic, 15 foot rod, small match reel. The hook length I'm using is 0.10, so it's lesser than the main line. So obviously if I hook a big fish, the, uh, you know, the bottom will snap and I won't be leaving a fish trailing afloat or what have you. It's something my dad always taught me and it's good practice to use. Main line, if it's six pound, use a four pound hook length. So um, it's just more for fish safety. So that's the tackle. I've got me waders, got me little bait, bait waiter here with a few bits of spare tackle in. They're the hooks I'm using, the beast hooks. They're really good hooks, really sharp. Um, they've got an intern beak point, which again, I think probably isn't perfect. But as I said, I don't do this every day. I'm learning every time I come up. Got me keeping it in there just to hopefully show you a few of the fish I catch later, me landing net, and I'm out in the water, really, really enjoying a bit of float fishing again. Okay, let's just run through probably one of the most if not the most important points about float fishing and that is feeding now at the moment i'm fishing a bulk shot and two really small droppers as i mentioned before so i'm trying to catch fish down on the deck because i think at this time of the day that's where they're going to be but as the evening progresses i'm expecting the fish to come up in the water and take on the drop so you just have to kind of like work your way into each session and uh, when you're actually trying to catch fish on the drop it's very important that you actually feed and then cast if you're fishing down on the deck then it's okay to put some ground bait in float out there feed at any time really but at the moment, I'm trying to see if those roach are going to come in. And if they start intercepting that bait on the drop, and at the moment, I'm getting the odd indications on the drop. That was a bite then. The bites aren't very good at the moment. Another little point is I found is every time you miss a bite, check where that tear is on your, on your hook, because it tends to fall down to the bottom of the hook or even turn around so the hook point is masked. So as you can see, try and feed, then cast. That was a bite on the drop, you see. So those fish are beginning to come up and as you can see that seed, well you can't see, but that seed has dropped down. So I'm trying to make it on the shank. Fish just jumped there. So there's a little bit of activity. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to run through prepping your tears really. Now I do my own, that float just bobbled again, a fish just tried to take that on the drop. There we go. That was down nearer the bottom. Not the biggest fish, but lovely roach on the hemp and tears. As you see, the sun's going down. I've been here, that really wanted it, that did. I've got a barbless hook on there. I'm going to have to 
go and get my disgorger on that one, which is a really, really good sign that they're beginning to switch on to that feeding. I've been feeding an hour or so. Again, I've just fed, fish just moved, so all looking good. So preparing your tears, very, very important, and this is the case with all particles, that you actually soak your particles, whether it be maize, peanuts, tiger nuts, and in this case, tears for at least 14 hours. Now, if, it, if you can, I would actually soak them for 24 hours. I did with these. What you'll find is they will swell up to probably twice the size. And then after the 24 hours, put them in a saucepan with some boiling water. Whoa, we're beginning to get bites. Put them in the pan, boil them, bring to the boil and simmer for 25 to 30 minutes. I check them after 20 minutes, just take them out, squeeze them in your fingers and they should be fairly soft in the sense that you can just, with two fingers, break them and the insides come out. If after 20 minutes, you know, just check them after 20 minutes because they might be done, but normally it's 25 minutes. Again, check them at 25 minutes. If they need a little bit longer, just give them another five minutes. And then what I do is I took them out, I ran them under cold running water just to stop that cooking process so they stayed as they are. So very, very important with your maize or any particles to make sure that you soak them prior to prepping them. And as I said, you should be able to just squeeze them between your two fingers and push the centre out. With hemp, it's not as bad. Um, you can buy your hemp dynamite. This is dynamite frenzied hemp, but with hemp, if I'm doing my own, I just put it straight in and I boil it for a lot longer than that, probably 40 minutes until you see the little white kernel showing. So prepping your bait is very important. Um, as I say, I get my hemp sent to me from Dynamite. The frenzied hemp is fantastic. It lasts for a long time if you keep it the top on and keep it in the fridge. Um, but I'm not sure whether you can actually buy maize. You can buy particle kind of like a party blend, but then you're feeding all different types of particle. In this case, I just want to fish, feed hemp and fish the tear like the icing on the cake and those bites can be fast and furious and one thing I would say yesterday when I got here I bought a perch rod because there are some big perch here and I wanted to catch a live bait or two and although I was feeding hemp I tried using maggot and I caught a couple of little perch put the perch out caught a pike straight away but I wasn't concentrating on what I was doing so uh, in the end I took the maggot off I wasn't really getting many bites, and when I did get a bite, it was always a perch. I think I had a dace, was the first fish I caught, a nice sort of dace, about six ounces, but then it was just perch, perch, perch. I tried sweet corn, I thought, you know, let's try sweet corn, couldn't get a bite on that. And I thought, you know, I might as well go home here. There's no roach here. But I just put a tear on and tried it, and on the drop, the float just sailed away. Now, if I hadn't had tears, I didn't use a tear, I would have said, there was no roach in my swim, but in fact, there were loads. And they were pre-op, just eating the hemp. And, um, you know, the tear that goes down looks a little bit like a bit of hemp. And um, they were, you know, taking that. So don't think you've got no roach in your swim, because if you start feeding hemp, that's all they're going to want, apart from anything that looks very similar. As you can see, still loads of boats. I'm still not expecting this to turn on. It's not really about catching loads of fish today, it's just about coming out, doing something different, going back to old school, something I've always wanted to do, fishing the float, and hopefully, you know, if I can catch, I don't know, 10 pound of roach today, that'd be fantastic. But as you can see, I'm not feeding and casting because I'm talking to the camera. I need to get that feeding going again and try and get those fish feeding um, confidently. So in order to do that, I need to, you know, settle down, concentrate and get into some sort of rhythm. Well, as you can see, the river's come alive. Work's finished, I suppose, and it's full of canoes. And as you can see, they come in 
a little bit closer than what I would think they should do. They don't give a toss about us anglers, unfortunately, but you know, the way it is. But very lucky not to have my phone soaked a minute ago or sunk because the uh, fire rescue boat came through at a right blooming rate of knots, causing an almighty wake, soaked everything, and I thought, God, you're going to be having to rescue me or my camera soon, buddy. But as you can see, it's completely, completely alive with canoes. But that is why you don't fish normally during the day at Walt when you're asking for trouble. I've also made a tactical change. Where earlier I was fishing a bulk and two droppers, I had a few bites, caught a couple of fish. Um, and I thought it was going to get better, but it's just not. I was getting a few indications on the drop. So I've now just changed to what we call a shirt button style. So as your shirt buttons are equally spaced down your shirt, I've done that. Long line of number eights, a number nine and a number 10, um, slowly getting further apart the, uh, the shot um, as it gets nearer the hook just to cause a nice slow descent. First cast, I had a nice dace. Second cast, bumper fish. And now after, the, as I said, the fire rescue boat went through um, and disturbed it and all the canoes have gone through, it's gone a bit quiet. So um, not going to plan. I think more to the point, it's not that I'm doing anything wrong today. I just think yesterday I found the fish in the deep water. That's where I was told today I've come somewhere where I can stand out in the water, enjoy a bit of float fishing instead of the uncomfortable swims where you're having to sit down because you're so high up, it just doesn't feel comfortable. But um, I don't think the fish are here in the numbers they are up there. So it just goes to show, if you want to catch fish, you've got to fish where the fish are. And I don't think they're here at the moment. Well, not at the moment anyway. Well, the sun's going down, as you can see, and it's really been not the easiest session. I'm catching a few fish now, but it's been a bit frustrating. I've tried bulk, bulk shot in. I've tried shirt button. You know, I am catching a few roach like that. Should I swing them? Should I net them? Beautiful fish. But I was aiming for about 10 pound and uh, I've got uh, a lot less than that, but just shows you. Um, I thought today I'd come up here, get 10 pound of roach, nice and easy on the hemp and tares. But today I think it's just really down to swim choice. The fish are in the deeper water. Wasn't very good, was it? The fish are in the deeper water. I'm actually just feeding the odd tear now because I think I might have overdone it on the hemp, which is quite easy to do. On the drop, shirt button style, the fish I was catching were dace, you know, quite some nice dace up to probably like six, seven ounces. But the boats have been an absolute nightmare. And uh, I haven't quite got it right today, or maybe I have. And as I've always said, you can only catch the fish in front of you and I just don't think see I'm getting a few bites now but and I'm hooking probably 50% of those whereas the other day I was getting <laughs> I was hitting probably about I'm not joking when I was getting the bites at the start probably 5% so I do think I'm getting closer I do think that if I had numbers of fish in my swim, £10 would have been easy achievable, but as I say, I've picked a comfortable swim and uh, I know it's a lot, lot shallower and uh, the fish just haven't turned up in numbers, so um, I will come back. I will give it a, another go because there's no, to me, there's not much greater feelings and seeing that float dip and a fast hard strike and a, and a decent fish on the end it's uh it's difficult to describe unless you're an angler but um 
you certainly get that here and I'm sure that there's some big roach around but uh, if I was catching fish like the one you know roach like the one I've just caught on a little bit more frequent basis it would be a fantastic day on a fantastic river in fantastic sort of urban settings there's always another day and it's as I said it's all new to me this I will come back and I will suss it out well I've probably come into at the end now the traffic's uh, died down probably got about another hour's fishing and it could turn on it's not actually gone to plan somebody said to me do I have a blank today I felt like I blanked actually I've had about a dozen fish a couple of days the rest have been roach, um, biggest was about half a pound, I suppose. Um, I do think I got my tactics right, the hemp and tears, learnt a lot yesterday, changed today, played about with things, but um, I just don't think I've had the fish in the swim. As I said, I think they're in the deeper water and this is a lot shallower, so uh, there's no flow out there, the float's hardly moving. So, uh, as they say, you can't catch the fish if they're not in your swim. So, uh, yeah, it's been really nice. A couple of people have come up and spoke. A youngster came up and said, oh, do you do YouTube channels? Oh, me and my dad watch you. Watch you. And I've got a gentleman here, Breen Fishing, that I've helped out a little bit. He's using long hook links. And I said, just go down short, fish the worm, fish early in the mornings, and you'll catch a few bream. So it's been nice to meet a few people. The canoes today have been a bit like bicycles to drivers. Um, very annoying at times, with no respect to us anglers. We all use the river and uh, why they have to come in so close, I do not know. But some have been, have been really polite and when they have come in close, they have at least apologised, but most of them just look at you like you're a piece of muck. So um, really enjoyed it coming back to my roots again. I love the River Thames. I love my float fishing. Uh, as I say, you, you know, you can't catch every time you come out, but I've learned loads. Um, somebody else said to me, why don't you, you know, you've got no... Um, ideas on going abroad and fishing and I just think there's so much in this country to to do and learn and improve on and this is something that's completely new to me the River Thames is full of roach I know it's got loads of roach and one day I might just uh, hit it on a red letter day but I haven't actually seen a bream move out here today and I said the other week they turn on probably about six guy who's bream fishing he hasn't had anything well I think he might have had one bite and lost a fish he said in a snag but I haven't seen any bream rolling, so I think it could just be one of those days because we have um, had that really hot period and it's gone quite cool and fresh. A cool night last night. I would have thought that might have turned them on, but um, at the same time, it could have turned them off. So uh, keep watching. Hope you like the video. I'm going to do a bit of um, chop worm on the pole. I've got my pole being elasticated by Colin, who's a browning angler, and we'll be going down on the Kennet and Avon for some lumpy perch very soon keep watching subscribe thumbs up and see you soon